Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can design your websites on tablet and mobile inside of Wix Studio. Let's go ahead and get started. So for today's video, we're gonna be using a website that we designed for our Fix Your Wix series. And for this website, you know, I haven't done any preparation for tablet or mobile. So we are gonna be basically doing this from scratch here. Let's just go ahead and start with the header. If I look at it here on desktop, it looks basically good on all breakpoints. So we're good here. If we come down to tablet, it's basically the same thing. I think this looks pretty good on all screen sizes here for tablet, but on mobile, it doesn't really look that good. So what I want to do is actually just grab this stack here, and then we are just going to hide it. For mobile headers, we always get this little hamburger menu. So if we open this up, we can of course design this however we want, but we're not really gonna worry about that too much today, like the hamburger menu. We're just gonna be focusing on this. And now I think the header actually looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the web page. So let's go ahead and start with this. I like this button size. I also like the font size. I really do not like any text smaller than 13 pixels on mobile. So the fact that on desktop, this one is 14 pixels, I really don't want it to get any smaller. So what I'm gonna do is actually set the responsive behavior from scale proportionately to fixed. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all buttons. Fantastic. So now when we go to smaller breakpoints, what you will notice is that all the buttons are basically staying the same exact size that they were on desktop, which is exactly what we want. Great. But the next thing I wanna take care of here on desktop is font sizing. Like I mentioned before with the buttons, I don't like text being smaller than 13 pixels, especially on mobile. So if I click this paragraph text and come down to mobile, you'll see that it's currently set to five pixels. And that is really, really small. So what we're going to do on desktop is we're going to drop down this little min max and we're going to make this 13. So what that's basically going to do is it's saying on desktop, the font size is 18 but it will never get smaller than 13 pixels. And so I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to all of our paragraph text elements here on the page, okay? Now let's look at the other text elements here. For this heading text, it's 56 here on desktop, and then on mobile, it's about 17. I think that looks pretty good. However, for this little seasonal thing right here, we can see it's nine pixels. So once again, we're gonna come all the way up to desktop and we're gonna set a minimum of 13 pixels for that little seasonal text. We have something very similar down here. It's the same format. So we're gonna set this as 13 pixels here as well. Also for these little things right here, we'll set these to 13 pixel minimums as well. And we'll go ahead and check these elements here and we'll set these to 13 pixels. And this is in a repeater. So it should apply that to all items inside of this repeater. And lastly, let's go ahead and check this one. This one's set to 28. Maybe we'll set the minimum here to 16. Okay, so now that we have all of our text elements taken care of, now we can go ahead and start working on the smaller breakpoints. If we come down to tablet, let's check out the website so far. I think the hero section looks good. I think this little feature section looks pretty good. This section looks good. I think this section looks pretty good as well. Here, this section right here could use a little work just because the button is so long. So what we're gonna do is just expand the stack out and make sure it's centered inside of the cell. And I think that looks perfect. And then down here, I think this is also good. I will say that with Wix Studio, I really do find that the tablet breakpoint is typically already for the most part pretty good. As long as you do the preparation work, like for buttons and text sizing on desktop, then on tablet, you rarely have to actually change too much on a tablet breakpoint. However, for mobile, things get a little bit different. You can see how everything kind of looks here. Everything looks cramped. Everything doesn't fit right. So we need to fix this. For the hero section here, I will say that this logo needs to be substantially bigger. So what we're gonna do is set this to be like 240 width. Let's see what that does. Maybe we'll even do like 280 in width. And now we need the height to kind of represent that as well. So let's go ahead and set it to like 120. I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and grab the stack real quick and we'll expand it out to the buttons. 
And I kind of messed up with the logo. I should have expanded the stack, not the logo, but all is good. We'll go ahead and center this and we'll remove the spacing here. Let's go ahead and grab the stack of buttons. We'll make sure this is centered and let's just remove the space a little bit more. Okay, and then we'll center the stack. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good for the mobile hero section. Now for these little mini little feature things right here, what I want to do is grab the repeater. So I'm gonna select this item, use the breadcrumbs and grab the repeater. And under number of items per row, let's just move this down to two. And we should have something that looks like this. And I want there to be a little bit more space on the top and bottom. So what I wanna do is scroll down and I think we're gonna add 2.5% on the top and I like the way that looks. So we'll add that to the bottom as well. And I think that looks pretty clean. Um, we could also come over here to the icons themselves and maybe we can bump these up to 16 in height just so that they are a little bit bigger. And I think that looks a little bit better. We can even potentially even make these a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna set this to 24 and 24 and maybe we can grab the text element here and maybe we can bump this up to like 16 minimum. I think that looks pretty good. And then for item spacing, let's go ahead and grab the stack itself and adjust the item spacing to maybe like six pixels. Let's see what that does. Uh, maybe we'll try 12. Okay, I think that looks really clean just like that. For this bottom section right here, I want to switch this from columns to rows. And I also want the text to be on top and the image to be on bottom. Now there are two ways we can make this happen. We can switch these cells right now before we switch it to rows or we can switch it to rows and then switch them. It doesn't really matter. The process will be exactly the same. So what I want to do is grab the cell over here on the left. We'll shift click on the cell on the right and we'll say swap, fantastic. And then if we select the section, we can easily just use this drop down and switch it to rows or we can come over here under layout and switch it to rows over here. So now we should have something that looks like this. Very simple, not hard to set up. And what I will do is drag this down just a little bit and then we'll grab this area right here and we'll bring it up. And we can even add like a five VW gap here just so we have something that looks like this. And I think that looks pretty clean. Um, we could even potentially center these items right here to have it more centered if we wanted to have this style, which I think this looks pretty good typically for mobile devices. We'll also just need to make sure that all of our text elements are a minimum of 13. They look really tiny here, but once you pull it up on a phone, it won't look as small. Underneath that, we have the cake jar section. Um, there are two ways to go about this. This section I will say is more of just kind of a design. So we can, in a way, keep it very similar to what it is. It's not gonna be a huge deal if we change the design up completely. We can either do something like this, or we can expand this down quite a bit. And let's just go ahead and hide these arrow icons here. We'll drag the vanilla bean text down here because this one is the vanilla bean. And then we'll grab this one right here. We'll make it bigger. We'll place it right here. And we can grab the cookie butter text and maybe we can set this as like 24 pixels. Fantastic. And we'll put this right underneath just like this. And then we can do the same thing for this one down here. We'll just make it bigger, center it. And then with this text element, we'll set the minimum to 24. We'll make sure it's centered and we'll move it down just a little bit. Now, again, for this section, we could have left it as it was if we wanted to, because the design components didn't really matter too much. The important part of the section was the C menu button here where, where people can click on it. But this is a good way to kind of change it up in a more vertical way so that your users can actually see the content a little bit better. And I'll just bring up this section just a little bit. Great. And then for this section down here, we're basically gonna copy the same thing that we did up here, just with this one. So again, I do want these to be switched. So what I want to do is grab the section. We're gonna switch this to rows. And I actually do want the text to be on the bottom for this one. So what I want to do is grab this cell down here. Then we'll grab this cell over here and swap these just like that. Very easy to do. Then we'll also align the items to the middle just like that. For this image here, the corners seem to have changed. So we're gonna set this down to 24 just to match everything else. 
And then we're also going to need to expand this down because we, we need to show more of the image. So we'll do this. And then for this grid itself, we're going to move this down just like that so that the image has more room than the text. And I think that looks pretty clean just like that. Fantastic. So as you can see already, our website is coming together and it's looking very, very clean. Um, and the last section we have is just this kind of like call to action down here at the bottom. This one again is gonna be pretty simple. All we want to do is grab this container and switch this from two by one to one by two. And it's going to stack things just like this. We're gonna add a row gap right here by saying five VW. And we're just going to adjust this container just a little bit. So instead of 15.6 VW, let's go ahead and set this to like 200 pixels. And then we'll switch this to VW. So now we have 51.3. Let's go ahead and apply that to this row down here. So we'll do 51.3, just so we, we're being consistent here. And for this text right here, we'll see it's set to 16. I forgot to apply it on desktop here. So let's go ahead and go up to desktop and we'll set the minimum to 16. And now when we go back down to mobile, it should show that. Perfect. The only other thing that I will say is this grid gap in between the container might be a bit too high. So let's actually grab the padding here. So what did we set as padding? We set 7.5%. So if we come back up to the gap, we'll notice that we do not have a percentage value. So what we're gonna do is just try 7.5 VW and see if that changes it. I think that was perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for. So we'll go ahead and do that for the bottom one as well. And there we go. We have created the Cakes by Anisha here for tablet and mobile, and it didn't even take long at all. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I'll see you on the next one.